Hey folks, so uh, it's uh, been a while since I've done a video on NixOS and the portion of the previous heat before I've mentioned about NixOS is how you can sometimes run software that you don't want to install on a machine permanently. And you make use of using the Nix shell or different uh, shell environments to be able to achieve that. And the whole reason you would do this type of thing is if you're want to uh, test pieces of software and you don't want to necessarily leave them permanently installed or you want to set up a specific uh, developer environment uh, quickly and easily on your machine but you don't want to do the whole configuration thing and you're not yet uh, using home manager or using flex or anything like that so what i mean well let me show you let me open up the console and do we make this bigger? And let's say, for example, I want to run a program from on the terminal. So let's say something like HTOP or Ironclove or even CalSec. Like these commands are not fun. But let's say I want to stop trying these applications for whatever reason, but I don't want to permanently install them on my machine. And I definitely don't want to go change my configuration file or etc. So what do I do? I'm going to create a temporary Nix shell environment. So what I mean by that is this. I'm going to run Nix dash shell, right? That's the command, dash p. And that means basically start a Nix shell dash p with this program or programs. So in my example here, I'm going to do htop space. And I'm going to do our clone as an example. I'm going to hit enter. Right. And it's a will pull down files in background. You're not seeing those files right now because I've been testing this, but it's pulled those files down. And you'll also see here that it's changed my shell session from the Gosh and Mixos, Mixos to a Nix shell. Now, same command. And if I do htop, htop of course now loads. If I do r clone, right, r clone birds. Right. So the great use of that is I want to use these applications, I want to do whatever I want to do, tech pre setup, which is really great. But what if I go exit? Right, and I do it this again. I'll cloud. Again, there's some file. Htop. Again, there's some files. What do I do? Well, I have to open Nix. I have to do a Nix shell again. Dash P. Do R clone. Do Htop. Etc. Again. And of course, back installed. Great. Now I can just say, well, what if I also wanted to add CalSec? Right, but we forgot what to do. Well, the nice thing with uh, this Nick shell is you can have environments on top of environments. So what I mean by that is I can go Nix dash shell again, same as normal dash p, and I can say calsec. Right now, let me show you. I do calsec. I love Nix OS. Kalsi, of course, works. What do you think happened to our clone and HTOP? Well, they're still there, right? Because it's in, it's an environment on top of an environment. So, of course, it's added in the application on top of an application. You got HTOP, it's still there, right? And of course, if I was to do which htop, you'll see it's loaded it just basically to a temporary location. Same as if I was to do which pause, same thing as well, temporary location. But what do you think is going to happen if I exit? So let's say I exit and then I'm back into the previous shell. Well, I would expect HTOP to work because it was in my original shell. 
I would expect our current to work because it was an original shell. But because I've exited the shell that we were added calsay, it's not going to work anymore. So again, good example of how you can run a shell on top of a shell and add an application you might have missed. But you could start going down a bit of a rabbit hole, so it's not always advisable to do it that way. Now, let me just turn exits here. Now, what if you want to run a graphical application, uh, temporary? Now, I will warn you, this doesn't work with all graphical applications. But let me show you. Let's say we want to try out a different web browser, for example. Yank mix spade with dash shell, dash peer give a package. And in this case, I'm going to do... Okay, so let's say I want to do a graphical application. So let's say I want to do something like Ray. So I can do a mix shell dash Ray. Sorry. Then dash B. Brave. Took it down, download the files, and all I need to just just type Brave at the command line. And here it is. Temporarily running, but not permanently installed, as you can see here. Right? Let's say, for example, I want to do the same with. Hey, I, I want to cut the bird this one. I forgot. Well, you can do it again. Make sure that P and the bird. Wait a couple of seconds, putting down the files quickly. Again, depending on internet speed. Right, I type in Thunderbird. And yes, yeah, Thunderbird starting up. Right, Thunderbird 102. And of course, it's not actually installed on the machine, it's just in that shell environment. So if I again do exit here, right, and I do Thunderbird, it's not going to work. Why? Because I do a shell on top of another shell. But if I do Brave, Brave will still load. And of course, if I do an exit here, let's clear the screen, do Brave. So that's all really, really great. But what happens if you want to start Nick Shell? Right. So let's say I want Nick Shell and I always want our clone. Right. And hold our clone. And I did an icon config. Okay, cool. I want our clone or git or whatever it is. But I don't want to keep turning link show all the time to install that. I just want to know the link show and this doesn't for me that the app must be installed. So let me show you a file here. There is a Type of a file called a shell.mix file. And if you put in this file and you create this file, and use an example, uh, packages to import mix packages, uh, packages.r clone here. So basically, what I'm telling it is when it creates a shell, it needs to automatically add the r clone package to it. So when I do my next shell, I'll clone this just be there. I don't want to go through the hassle of installing it. So let me show you. As long as you're in the directory of the shell.mix file you've created, and I do mix dash shell, I do nothing else. The system's going to read the shell.mix file I showed you. And if I do our clone config, you'll see our clone is already installed. Okay. Doesn't have can be anything else, so I'm gonna just do a quick uh, exit over here, and I'm gonna do a open again, and I'm gonna add another package. So I'm gonna do package dot say and package dot age tom. I'm just gonna save the file quickly. Right. 
I'm going to run it again. No. Package is pre installed. Right. And of course, all of it is there. So, why would you predefine a shell environment? Well, like I've shown you, you just want to get up and running. You have a couple of applications here. And you don't want to go and uh, repeatedly install them for your shell environment. And that, well, the idea is, in theory, you take this file, save it somewhere, and launch your shell environment, and this application should always be there. Now, again, as I've shown you, you can update it as well. So if it was for the uh, graphical application you wanted, so I'm going to do a uh, use Brave again, and I'm going to save the file again, and run it again. Okay, consent to my next shell, so let's fix it. Clear that again, and run next shell again. Cool. I'm going to tap Brave, and it's going to load that. So, of course, it will work with graphical applications as well. At the moment, I use this. It's going to lose that data and it's gone. So, graphical applications, it works as well, hit and miss. Now, the whole reason, of course, is mainly for developer environments, or you go to different machine and you want to move a file and it's there. So, that's all very well and great. And that's where I'm going to stop for, for today's video when it comes to this. Basically, just showing you how to use this and it's really great you can use it on multiple environments and it works really well what I'll show you in a different video soon is what happens if you want it to be the same application version so the next uh, video on this topic that I'll release is let's say I want it to be the same version of Brave or let's say I want uh, Git to be the same version or I want HTOP on my other laptop to be the same version because I might have installed NixOS on my laptop a week ago or a month ago and it might not be the same version that uh, is on here. So just because I'm a file around doesn't mean it's going to be the same version. So I'll do another video to show you how you can make sure it uh, is the same version. Folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the Spike Science video. Hope it helps. If you have questions, keep them below. And thank you for watching.